I'm going to talk about Alan Moore. Um, one of my probably number one creators of all time. Um, I mean, everybody's got their favorites, and I've got Alan Moore as my favorite because, well, he basically recreated the whole uh, understanding of comic books and especially superhero comic books. And born in 1953, uh, 18th of November. And um, you guys probably know lots and lots about Alan Moore. But um, I wanted to talk about my, um, my favorite uh, collections that I have of Alan Moore stuff. Uh, things that I've, over the last, oh, maybe just over 20 years that I've been collecting his works. Um, I've read just about probably everything he's ever written, apart from stuff that he might have done for smaller uh, companies when he was over in England, back in the early days in the 80s and late 70s and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, everybody knows, you know, everybody who's anybody knows Watchmen, right? Um, the 12 issues of Watchmen. Um, and over the years, I've picked up as many Watchmen things as I could. Like, I even went as far as getting the complete, absolute Watchmen. All right. Um, you know, very, one of, probably one of the more expensive ones I've got. The absolute Watchmen. This is like the large print of his comics. Like, of his 12 issues, all grabbed together with an amazing... Uh, slip case, hardboard um, case, you know, uh, cardboard case that you can protect it in. Because, of course, you know, why wouldn't you want to protect something like the Watchman, uh, with especially the absolute Watchman, in a in a box, right, on its own. So this is a. I I've never read this. I haven't. I you know. It's looked at and it's uh, because I've already read. Uh, you know, the comics, uh, watch the movie and everything, own the DVD and so on. Uh, but if you look at the, you know, if you, if you look at the size of these panels here, because they've been enlarged, um, I think by another a third. Um, and it's just the amazing work that he actually puts into his, his, um, why he's written the stories the way he's written. And, you know, he's, why he's such a, such inspirations to anybody who wants to do comics or anything understands who Alan Moore is. They might not like him as a person or his beliefs or whatever, or his political whatever, but you cannot um, dismiss his amazing um, influence on modern comics. Um, over the last, I guess, I think he's probably about 40 years that he spent writing comics and um, his details is what really amazes me about um, about what he does with comics. I mean, like, you know, he talks about the world, you know, pages and pages of like just detailing how these things, uh, why he's writing the characters the way he's writing. And you get, you know, with this absolute one, I'm not sure if they're still publishing this. If you're like, if you've got one of these and you're lucky, uh, I think they usually do like a limited release of these. And I mean, something like this is a precious um, treasure to have if you're a comic book fan. Um, I was able to pick it up and when I was doing the store. And so I, um, you know, I bought in all these books and um, I had the Absolute Sandman as well in the first volume. And I, I, I know it was the Absolute Death and I'm, of, um, by Neil, Ga Neil Gaiman. And I miss having sold that. I really miss having sell sold that. But yeah, so this is an amazing, um, you know, amazing, you know, um, treasure to have if you're um, if you're a comic book fan. Design work, uh, talking about what you know, how you want the characters look, uh, what what the world is creating for them, and so on. Um, and you know, he he's got he's such an amazing um, writer, and you can't just um, dismiss him just because you know of what where he stands and with what he thinks um this the amazing thing about this uh, absolute is that you've got designs of like pre-living designs of what they were looking what the characters would look like before they were you know 
sorry about that, that, that before they actually end up in the final stages, you know, everything he talks about, he details with his artist, he's probably one of the most, uh, most detailed persons when it comes to comic books um, and stuff. I'm not so detailed when it comes to uh, creating my characters. I, uh, you know, I jot out what I want to do and then I'll say, this is what, this is my prelim sketch. Here you go, seven. Uh, please have a look at this, see what you can do with it. He'll come back with three or four different things and then I'll have a go at it. I'll go, okay, uh, we're like when we're doing the mask, I was like, okay, let's change that around a bit for red dot I'm talking about here. And, you know, over time we decided to do it slightly different. Then we decided to add a few more characters into it and bring it home to us. But so, so something like, um, you know, seeing, um, having inspiration like Alan Moore, having all these little, you know, all these books, historical books you can you know you get an idea of what you, what you can inspire to or aspire to be inspired and aspire to something uh, so you know uh, of course you also know about uh, about v for vendetta and um let me see um some of those other works uh, there's this amazing another amazing book uh hardcover collection uh, i'm not sure if it's in trade um where it's the best, um, the D DC Universe of Alan Moore came out as a hardcover. I'm not sure if it's, it's they've released it, um, re-released as a trade, but it's another amazing uh, collection to have, I mean, to have in your collection. So the, that's the DC Universe of Alan Moore. And it's it's all the different things he, uh, you know, little, um, little stories that really stand out that he wrote like a single issue thing or a, a, like a little um, five, six page thing in the back of a, another comic. And it's just, you know, he, he looks at all the different um, characters. So you've got stuff like Green Lantern, uh, Batman, uh, Vigilante, um, let's see, Phantom Stranger, Zantana. Um, of course, you've got um, Superman and Wonder Woman. So that's, that's that one there. Now, um, of course, then you've got the League of um, um, Extraordinary Gentlemen. DVD, you know, um, I had I hadn't actually read the series before the DVD uh, movie came out, so I was quite um, once again, you know, so I was quite um, intrigued, and so I wanted to go back and figure out what his, um, you know, what what the actual books were like, and so, you know, um, you've got once again you, he's working this with this one he's working with Kevin O'Neill, you know, one of the great um, one of the great artists as well, Kevin O'Neill. And so I love his style as well. His like just very very thin lines, uh, very precise lines, uh, different and uh, to um, uh, um, different in style to superhero comics, as you can see here, with um, with the style here with um, with the Killing Joke, uh, with um, Joker, uh, Batman the Killing Joke, with um, he did it with um, Brian Bolin. Um, so yeah, so I think. You know, we, it's, he's been, it's kind of like one of these uh, characters who everybody wants to um, be like, yet, uh, or aspire to be like uh, in their comic writing. And, and most, some people, you know, some of the pros won't even mention him as such because they don't get along with him or they don't like the, what, the situation with Watchmen because they think, because he holds Watchmen as a dear to his heart and how he feels about that with DC. And you guys can read up on all that if you want. You know, it's all available there. And it's, it's amazing watching him talk about uh, just his experiences in comic books and why he left DC and, you know, why he went and did his own things afterwards, uh, like, you know, like with Extraordinary Gentleman, right? Um, and started his own company, America's Best Comics. Uh, and he did his own series there. So you've got stuff like... Uh, Grab it here. You got stuff like Smacks, um, and this is a series uh, torn between two worlds from the pages of um, uh, Top Top Ten. So the Top Ten is a series here that he's like with America's Best Comics. He started with let's see who was it. Um, he had artists like uh, Zander Moore. Um, there's other ones here. There was um, Gene Her, and Zander Moore worked on that quite a bit. And um, and this is just taking taking another look at um, you know the whole superhero genre. And vigilantism and stuff like that. He really understands about, um, you know, the mindset of um, a character. 
there's such a um, and so if you in any time in your life if you decide you well you know i like to create a comic book character alan moore is the go-to guy and and um and whether you like him or not or whether you agree with him or not on things it doesn't really matter uh inspiration you can find it anywhere so for me i've got you know piles and piles of alan moore books and he's my number one writer and i and i love the guy and he's just such an amazing thing so one of his characters from america's best which came um which you know later on were produced through um vertigo and stuff and and th that's when he went off to do his own thing with america's best comics this is tom strong one of his characters tom strong is amazing uh, i don't want to give much away on that in the sense that um it's just such a such a really really good character to read especially part of the top 10 um sorry um the top 10 series but to, um the tom strong is an amazing series to read now the other one um i was going to mention uh, there's the other ones is like 49ers as part of the top 10 these these are really really um uh, amazing um uh, books out of the america's best once again gene her and uh ha and um Zander Cannon. The artwork is exceptional. It's just amazing line work. Just the best of the best and the, and the works there. And I mentioned um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen earlier. There's another one here. Uh, this is the, I think this is the black, um, let me just grab it out. This is the black dossier. And this one actually comes with a, right, with a 3D glasses. So, you know, he's doing he's been he was he's been doing stuff that people are just trying to get into now or have tried many times. So, of course, you got a cardboard there popped out of there. So I bought it, uh, you know, I bought off Trade Me one time. So, it's the guy had already tried to read around it and stuff. So you've got amazing, amazing um, detail of work that's not you know that's that's just inspiration. Like you got a pamphlet here, right in the middle of the trade paperback. I'm sure they put a hard cover, but like you've got this little, you know, little um, what they used to call um, the TG, TG, Tijuana Bible, which was like these um, little pamphlets, um, erotic, really over sexualized um, pamphlets back um, back in the day in the 70s that they have like little little um, underground comics. Um, and so, you know, he's decided well, he's going to add that in there because I mean, he's. He's a guy who's basically all about comics and the history of comics and you know the inspiration so you've got like notations and stuff like that in here as well and this is the black dossier so you've got amazing uh you know amazing work just like you know you've got like stuff in the middle of it like um postcards you know postcards being sent between people so you know it's, you cannot but be inspired to look at how to do things not just um you know just pictures and words uh, speech bubbles but a bit more and i've been trying that with um incredible uh at the moment with um with issue two trying to do a whole lot of like a a, a historical story running in the back of incredible uh, i mean through the pages of incredible like every single page for the last i think apart from the first one where there's like a, a back story to the history of how these guys came to be but because I don't want to go and make another comic book and put more work on my artists, I just thought, you know, I need to get this book out. So I'm not going to go. I can't wait to get around to do the artwork on this one. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to historically um, narrate this um, history about what's happened to bring these guys into this world. Uh, the Super Man, right? Um, so let me see. From Hell another great book of course you've probably seen the johnny depp um book uh sorry the movie about jack the ripper so you've got this huge huge work i think it's about might have been 18 or 24 issues or something uh, they re-released this in color recently i saw and i think it might have been through avatar uh where it's been colored up this is with um alan moore and eddie campbell and I, what i like about alan moore he he, he goes he's such a uh, big name that uh, you know only the greatest of the greats will work with him you know because they know that because they know what he's like they understand what he's trying to do as a comic professional he um you know and he's 
epitome of professionalism when it comes to what a comic book should be and what you can do with it. So you've got like nine panel, tiny, tiny sketches, very detailed black and white uh, images. So now they've re-released them. I think, I think it is 12 issues in color, as I mentioned, um, and a single issue series, uh, comic series. I'm hoping to get my hand on that sometime. But, um, but of course, the other thing I want to mention is um, in my collection, I was able to pick up um, a few years ago, I think it may have been about seven, eight years ago, where um, I was able to get to, here we go, uh, to find the portfolio for, um, I'm, I might have mentioned this before, but I love these, I don't mind mentioning them over and over again because I love them so much. This is the, the portfolio of covers that they released all over the world of, um, of Watchmen, right? So this is one of my treasures. And this is like, um, let me see, when did it come out? 1988. Um, so 32 years ago, I guess. Uh, maybe a bit longer. So they come with these uh, amazing, amazing um, cardboard uh, prints of, um, of the different covers they did. So you've got these amazing, and the black and white series is, I think uh, this is the 12 Velshu Deluxe series, um, where are we? So you've got this one here. This is a prom promotional poster set, set that they did as part of the 12th thing to release it. Um, of course, and now they just basically, you know, if you're releasing a comic, you just, like, you know, with Marvin DC, all they do is do an interview and they do some images, as you saw recently with New Warriors. Uh, and with um, Gotham High, do a little video, and that's there, and you know, everybody knows about it. You don't do anything. Back in the day when you didn't have internet, right, and, you know, you would be putting out, like, um, po um, flyers like these out there uh, to get people to come in. Um, excuse me. Get interested in new work. So when, of course, when Watchmen came out, nobody knew what it was. So they would do covers for France. Especially, you know, there's a whole set of um, covers they did for France, and so you've got. Uh, if I remember, these are the put, these are the covers for those ones. And these are cardstock, and you got different uh, covers there. Um, you got you got the owl, you got the silk specter. Uh, so here you got Luge Gagion, L'Oreal. Hopefully, you can see that, and the silk specter. Uh, Le, le hibou, hibou, maybe I'm pronouncing it right. These guardians, so the guardians, watchmans. So, and then you got Rochas, and you know, just amazing French cover for the, um, for the watchman. Um, let me see what else we got here. Um, here we go. You got Le Comédien in French, right? So this is the French cover for the um, for the Watchman, and then you've got Doctor Manhattan. He doesn't have <laughs> he doesn't have a French translation of his name, and this is the other cover for that. So, and then then you've got Ozzy and that this is the French cover for that. Um, next up, so I think there's about they do about six each to just try to um, try to promote that. And they, of course, they come in these portfolio um, um, slip cases. And then you've got the American one. So this is, um, the, you know, again, cardstock. And they come with all the different 12 covers they have there. So you've got, that was at midnight, all the agents. This is number two. All right. The judge of all earth. Number three. Number four, Watchtower. Number five, Fearful Symmetry. Oops, let me see if you can see that. So this is the, this is the American covers of the Watchmen. So, and they got all 12 of them there. So they came in this really beautiful portfolio set. And, um, you know... I think at the time it cost me about seventy dollars because um, the gentleman was trying to, you know, I think he was looking at either selling up his collection to buy a new house. I'll, 
you know, I went into this place whose cupboards were just full of comics, like totally just like full of them. He had a special room for them along with the toys. Like all of us, prop, long-time collectors, you know, we we have our own collections and we, you know, we like to look after them. So every, you know, and us collectors like who's been collecting for 20, 30 years, you know, or been fans for 20, 30 years, or even, um, you know, some in my case, fan for almost 50, 40 years, right? Uh, and I've... You know, on, online you can go to um, groups and they've been fans for 60, 70 years, right? Since they were kids. My dad read his first comic um, when he was around about seven years old or something. And um, when the first Superman came out, you know? And so, yeah, so I, I think um, if you really, you know, if you really, really want to wanna be inspired, read, uh, read an Alan Moore comic book. Of course, he, um, he's done a few more mature ones. These are just the ones I'm mentioning as the more popular ones. There's uh, ones he's done through Avatar uh, and some other uh, publishers as well. And um, of course, now he's basically decided, you know, he's, he's, he's tried to, excuse me, every time he tries to get back into comics, there's detractors there who are just trying to push and push him out. And he's just decided, finally, I just can't be bothered. You know, I'm just going to go write um, write um, novels. And he did a novel recently, a couple of years got called um, called Jerusalem. Very, very big book um, about, um, I think, fantasy and mythology and stuff in England. And um, and that um, sort of the, um, you know, the history there. So I think there's no one better to be inspired by if you're writing comics or if you're thinking about it or if you're talking about designing characters, if you're thinking about how to... Um, you know, give your characters uh, a much more better rounded um, personalities and um, there's a better, you know, bring in things that are actually realistic and not just, you know, just to, you know, something that you haven't thought through. You just thought, oh, yeah, this character looks like that. Oh, okay, this will do. And then people go, what is it about? And they go, oh, I don't know. I just felt that way. And I used to do that with a lot of work that I used to write before. I'd be like, oh, yes, yeah, because I felt in the mood to do that. Now I'll kind of like go, well, you know, it's, um, I'm going to have to really, because now I'm working with other artists, I have to go, well, this is why I did that there. This is what's going to happen there. And look, this is the color change we need to make. Um, this is why we need to do this. Whereas before it was just like, it's just me. I'll just do whatever I want and I'm away with it. Because when you're working with other creators, as Alan Moore always does as a writer, he's always, you know, he's always back and forth, back and forth and, you know, trying to give notes and saying, this is what, this is happening. And I think there's, like I said, no one greater to be inspired by it to be a better comic book writer. And he's a total icon. And he's, uh, you know, he's a gift to us all as creators. And I think if, uh, you know, if you, you, you know, you don't have to be so, you know, overwhelmed by, um, by his, um, whatever he's about, but just the work that he's done. And it's just inspirational. And I think, um, it, it, if you if you love the movies, you'll find that the you know and if you haven't read the comic books, read the comic books. There's so much more there isn't in the movies, and of course you never can put all those things in the movies because you'll be there forever trying to figure out what's what he's about and what he's trying to do with that character. What is there, and that's why he doesn't like his, uh, you know, doesn't like his um, comic books made into movies. And uh, I mean, I understand it fully. Because uh, if you if you have a lot of back matter and a background to what you're trying to do historically, like like especially if you look at Watchmen, he said it you know it was set in England, right? Uh, that that I think it was uh, Thatcher's England. So it was a very politically based comic book that was set in a specific country, but of course they turned it and made it into America, and so the politics doesn't work as much, and so and the same thing with um, V for Vendetta, right? Um, of, it's the same thing. It's like he, he, he goes into real details about what's happening and why he's writing what he's writing. And so I think if you want to be inspired, Alan Moore is an amazing person to be inspired by. And also look at the different art styles that he's work, um, artists that he's worked with and all the different art, art styles. He's not sticking with just a one person. He's all, always finding the best and the best and the best that's available who, who are willing to do the work. I mean, you know, you got if you're working with Alan Moore, you're committing for at least twelve issues, you know. But you know that his name alone, because 
of the trust that his readers have and his fan base have in him because they know that he's not just putting out anything, you know, just because he just thought that was a great art. He actually has worked on it for long periods of time. And so when you see something from him, it's it doesn't come out every week, right, or every month. It comes out after it's been done a while. And then he he's very, and that's why I think that he's, he's, he's very thought-provoking in what he does with his work. And, hey, Orion, hope you're okay there, bro, in America. Hope everything's okay. Um, if you, are you still in California? And, yeah, so I think anybody who's anybody knows uh, in comic books as a fan knows who Alan Moore is. And I don't have to go on about Alan Moore. I don't have to give you a history of him or anything like that. All you need to know is that, hey, he's one of the greatest living icons ever right now. And um, he just basically changed the whole hero genre and uh, inspired so many creators. And, of course, there's so many other creators. But if, for me, I mean, my pile of hardcovers and trade paperbacks, you know, are high when it comes to Alan Moore. Um, I was trying to find my number one issue, um, first appearances of Hellblazer because Hellblazer is one of my top uh, favorite, probably number one favorite character. And um, not because it's he created, but because it's a, such an amazing character. And um, and of course, that was created in um, Swamp Thing. And I forgot to mention, of course, there was the DC Comics Swamp Thing. So he re revitalized the whole Swamp Thing um, series. And of course, you've got um, the recent, um, I think it was Hulu or um, I don't think it was Netflix. Um, no, I think it was DC Universe that put out the, uh, the first season of um, Swamp Thing. So like, um, he's, you know, he really, really um, took a character that um, I think it was Walt Simonson uh, wrote and really just blew it out of the, out of the window. And, and if you look at that, it's such a political book. And, uh, and it's done such a way, it talks about nuclear armament, talks about toxic waste, talks about, uh, you know, destruction of small um, townships. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, politics and gender and everything. And, and, and it's, and um, people, you know, um, kind of like, uh, don't understand it, or they try to make, uh, try to say this and this about his work. But he's, if you really, really want to be inspired, Start off with um, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing's a really, really good series. The saga of the Swamp Thing is his work that he's worked on. I think it was about six volumes, maybe more. Uh, but it's just, it's such a, a great, great way to take a character. Um, if you want to look at how to take a nonsensical character, right? That was like about, I think, like a couple pages in a book. And then um, I think Walt did um, a series and then he decided, you know, it was... You know, whoever was writing there was they needed something else done with this. Alan Moore was brought in, just blew out the window. It's regarded as one of the uh, greatest runs of Swamp Thing ever. Uh, and so, yeah, this, yeah, if you really want to understand how to write good comic books, Alan Moore, man, there's no other one, uh, no other person who's done more for comics than our living icon. 